gonna try to share my slides with you. Um, so yeah, uh, I will talk about Flapper Drones. Uh, we are a, a startup company, a spin-off of TU Delft, uh, working on uh, flapping wing drones, so drones inspired by, by nature. And um, my talk will be uh, a little bit about uh, the history of the company, how we started, and then I'll explain a bit more about uh, our, our drones, our, our products, and uh, yeah, uh, if you would like to uh, use them, how you can uh, get one. Um, so first, a little bit of motivation, why we actually are uh, looking into this and why we're uh, yeah, uh, bringing new type of drones to the market. Um, if you look at uh, the current uh, flying uh, micro robots, uh, well, they, most of them will have uh, some sort of propeller or a rotary, rotary wing, uh, like the Black Hornet uh, helicopter on, on the picture. Uh, but then, yeah, if we look into nature, we don't see any propellers there. Instead, we see wings uh, that are being uh, flapped, so move up and down or back and forth. And so, as uh, Barbara mentioned, I, I uh, spent quite a lot of time in academia. And so at the beginning of all this was uh, just pure curiosity. Uh, how can we uh, can we create uh, robots that can fly like uh, uh, these very elegant uh, flying animals? And can we maybe approach their agility? Uh, and uh, is it possible to achieve all that with, with a robot? Uh, with the technology that we have at hand. And well, as uh, Barbara mentioned, I, I started uh, um, in um, Prague at uh, Czech Technical University. And there I was still working on different types of robots uh, on quite big machines, actually. But then I moved to, to Brussels. And then I started working on a robotic hummingbird project. Um, you can see, actually, um, the prototype uh, uh, in my hand. Uh, so it is really at the scale of hummingbird with uh, two wings like a hummingbird has. Uh, at that time, uh, when I was you know, defending, it was still a demonstrator. It couldn't fly. But later, the team managed to finalize it. And we managed to get a flight of 10 to 20 seconds, uh, stable flight, which was an achievement at that point. Uh, but I moved uh, to TU Delft, where uh, they have been researching flapping flight for uh, a while already. And my basically uh, goal was to uh, make their designs more agile and make them fly more like uh, what insects do. And I'll explain about it uh, later. Um, over those years, you can also notice a trend in the amount of hair I have. So while well, uh, I had quite a lot of hair uh, as a master student, uh, it was getting uh, worse and worse over time, and that trend still continues. So, who knows me? Maybe confirm. Anyway, uh, at TU Delft, uh, we eventually uh, made this uh, drone called the Delphi Nimble. And uh, you can see it, uh, hopefully, if the video streams uh, well, uh, you can see it flying and performing uh, some uh, agile maneuvers uh, on your screens now. Um, it was. Uh, at that time, um, we called it the most agile uh, flapping wing vehicle, but we believe it still is, if not one of the most agile vehicles, it might still be the, the most agile one. Um, I'll explain a little bit later about how it flies, but you can notice that it really looks like an insect uh, when it's in the air. It is a little bit larger, so about 30 centimeters in wingspan. But to design that, we uh, had to draw quite a lot of inspiration from, from nature. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we also use it actually for uh, research, which uh, uh, helped us understand how uh, also biological flyers uh, fly and how to create models of how they fly. And so we worked uh, also with uh, together with the university in Wageningen. And uh, the, the research and the method of using a flying robot to understand uh, biology uh, brought us uh, to the um, science magazine. So we had a publication that got published there. And we even managed to get a, the, the cover uh, photo, which, uh, yeah, of course, is a very nice uh, uh, and prestigious thing. And in response to this, we got a lot of uh, media publicity, uh, also got some awards at uh, various conferences. Um, and as you can see, uh, one of our prototypes even got to the hands of uh, Jeff Bezos. 
uh, at his private conference uh, in uh, in Texas. So we got quite a lot of attention, and uh, in response to this uh, uh, media attention, we got approached by uh, many different uh, people interested in using our drones, and most of them were from the entertainment industry. And um, one uh, producer in particular. Uh, wanted us to create a show with flying birds uh, that would be flying around uh, a well-known singer during uh, uh, her, her concert. And this was actually the, the starting point of, of uh, Flapper Drones, of, of uh, our company. Um, so I got together with uh, my co-founder. Um, I will explain that uh, later, but um, we saw not only that application, but we also saw applications in, for example, theme parks where we could create uh, flying fairies or, uh, you know, like have castles with uh, uh, just uh, fairies or, or birds or other flying creatures loitering around. Um, so this was in 2019. And um, uh, yeah, we started uh, as a spin off uh, of the university. Uh, it was uh, me uh, and uh, Rick Rousing, uh, a former colleague of mine. And um, as it's uh, often the case, the, the project uh, uh, that we started with it uh, at the end uh, had to stop because of uh, lack of funding and maybe not uh, fast enough development on the technology side. But we already had some drone prototypes and we thought, well, let's just uh, continue and, and find uh, different clients for this technology. Um, on the map on the right, you can see where Delft uh, is located. It's uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in the western uh, part of Europe. Uh, we are actually now uh, moving to the Czech Republic, uh, where, where I come from, and where the conditions for producing uh, drones might be more favorable. And they are certainly more favorable for uh, mountain biking, which is uh, my big hobby. So that's also one of the reasons why we're moving there. But uh, it's a country which has a lot of uh, very talented uh, engineers, and that's the main reason we go there. Um, now, to explain a little bit more about how the, the flapper uh, flies, uh, let me take a quick look into nature. Uh, so here you can see various animals uh, as they're flying. In the top row, you can see animals, uh, well, it's a cuckatoo that is flying forward. Uh, first uh, against uh, high wind and uh, later against slower wind. And as you can see in forward fly, the animal is flapping its wings up and down. Uh, so the flapping helps to propel the, uh, the animal forward to basically contract uh, drag. But then it's uh, getting most of its lift. So the force that is carrying it, uh, carrying it, carrying it uh, in the air, uh, just by gliding. So the, the, its wings uh, work like an airplane wing and they provide you with lift. But uh, as you fly slower, you have to use the flapping motion more and more to also support your weight just through the, the flapping. And uh, in the limit case, when you want to hover, uh, you can see the in the bottom row that the hummingbird and, and the fly on the right, they are flapping their wings uh, horizontally. Uh, so all the lift force is created through the, the flapping motion. And this is actually very uh, energetically costly uh, for those animals and uh, is possible only at small scales due to scaling laws. So uh, you might see maybe a pigeon briefly hovering when it is trying to, to perch, but it cannot sustain that. Uh, only hummingbirds and uh, uh, flying insects can sustain hovering flight. Uh, but for robots, hovering flight is uh, actually very interesting because it allows you to stop, uh, turn around maybe when you get to the end of the corridor, for example. Uh, so this is what we were after. Um, now, if we look into existing flying uh, robots, uh, most of them can only fly forward. Uh, and you can find such robots on the market. There are toys like the Metafly, and there are uh, bigger uh, robotic birds that are used for bird control at the uh, airports, uh, like the Robert, uh, a Dutch company also. Uh, and Festo has done the many uh, flying robots, uh, some, uh, for example, these uh, butterflies. Uh, but again, this is a robot that can only keep flying forward, but cannot stop and, and hover. 
And uh, the Delphi project running at the TU Delft was originally also using a design where um, the wings would be flapping with one degree of motion. Uh, so um, you can see the the way those wings move. They are doing this X, they have this X configuration. So the wings are continuously clapping and peeling apart, which is uh, improving the, the thrust uh, production efficiency. But the, the control in all these vehicles is typically uh, done through the tail of the vehicle. Uh, which has uh, conventional controlled surfaces like an airplane, so a rudder and an elevator. Uh, the only exception here is the butterfly, which actually can adjust the, the motion of the wings independently, um, but doesn't have enough power to, to hover. Uh, now, if we look into nature, if, if you want to fly, uh, if you want to hover, you need to be able to fly, uh, to control your flight without the tail. Uh, because uh, yeah, when you hover, uh, your tail, uh, there is no air or very little air uh, flowing around your tail. So the, air, the, the, the tail is not so very active. It cannot generate many uh, forces. So you need to do all this control effort through your wing motions. Uh, and what you will need to do is you will need to stabilize your roll and, and pitch uh, of, the, of the body. And uh, here are some examples how you can achieve, how an insect can achieve that. So for example, you can alter the angle of your wing, uh, of one of your wings, such that that wing produces more thrust force than the other wing, and that will uh, turn your body left or right. You can also achieve that by increasing the amplitude with which you are flapping the wing. And similarly to, to control your pitch, you can, for example, uh, like in the case at the bottom, you can move uh, the wings a little bit behind your body, uh, which will uh, move the average thrust vector behind your center of gravity and pitch you forward. Um, and once you can do this, you can also fly forward or uh, sideways by thrust vectoring. This is the same what we see in, in uh, quadcopters or in helicopters. And here you can see this footage of a, of a, of a bee or a wasp, sorry, uh, where you can clearly see that to move left or right, it just uh, rolls in that direction. Um, now there are also some, there were some hover capable robots before we started and there are some, but all of them are basically just demonstrators uh, from, uh, in this case, uh, um, private companies, uh, Festo and Air Environment, but there are also some uh, demonstrators from universities, but none of them reached uh, the state of, of, a, of a product. And this is usually due to the complexity of the mechanical solution that you need to be able to achieve control through the wing motion. So yeah, as you can see, the, the Festo Bionic Copter has a lot of uh, gear systems uh, in it. Uh, similarly, the, the Nano Hummingbird uh, is very elegant, but also quite complex internally. Uh, so. Uh, at TU Delft, we were looking for a solution that would be uh, as simple as possible, yet it would give us uh, the controllability we needed. And so we came uh, up with this solution. Uh, let me play this movie on the right. So here you can see what is under the hood of the, the flapper ground. Uh, so we have flapping mechanisms that move the wings, but they are independent. So we can drive the left and right wing pairs independently. We can also adjust the position of these mechanisms so we can effectively move the thrust force backwards. And then you could see this little servo that is moving and tilting the roots of the wings in opposite directions. Um, I can probably play that again. Uh, but on the left, you can then see the schematics, how this works. So by driving one of the wing pairs faster than the other one, we can create a uh, roll. Uh, moments by having higher thrust vector on one side than on the other. By adjusting the, uh, by moving the mean position of the wings more in front of the center of mass, uh, like is indicated in the middle case, uh, we move the thrust vectors in front of the center of mass and this gives us pitch torque. And finally, by tilting the, the roots of the wings, like is, it's indicated over here, we will tilt the thrust vectors in opposite directions and gives us yaw torque. So this is what we use for turning. Uh, so these are all very simple mechanisms, but 
together, they actually <laughs> allow us to, to fly uh, very well. So this is a video that you can also see on our website, but uh, shows the capabilities of flapper drones. So they can take off vertically. They can hover uh, very stably. Of course, they can ascend and descend like uh, any drone. Uh, but what makes them special and look like birds, especially flying forward and backwards, uh, they can also fly sideways, uh, which is useful for a drone, of course. And you can combine all these uh, motions. Uh, so you can fly forward and turn, or you can also do these uh, pirouettes by flying sideways uh, and turning at the same time. Um, so I already explained how the drone works uh, internally in terms of mechanics. Um, but uh, as um, any quadcopter drone, it actually needs active onboard uh, stabilization um, because the it is unstable on its own and a human pilot is not fast enough to be able to stabilize such a platform. Uh, so we're using standard uh, six axis IMUs and uh, then a microcomputer that is uh, doing the attitude estimation and, and control. Um, what you can notice is that unlike a quadcopter drone, which uh, usually is very stable, um, we get a lot of vibrations on board due to the flapping motion. So the whole platform is basically <laughs> shaking quite a lot. And this is something that can create some challenges for, for the control system. Uh, but it's something which can be solved by filtering. So uh, the pure uh, controller that you need uh, to get this table is a PD controller. You can, of course, think of something more sophisticated, but uh, with a PD controller, you will be fine. And then we uh, use uh, low pass filtering such that we can get rid of some of the uh, some of the high frequency noise from from the signals. Uh, and as with any filter, you have to find the right balance between the filtering effect and the delay that you introduce into the control system. If you filter too much, you will again destabilize the system. Um, for some of the flips that you saw in the very first video I showed, we also switch to uh, an open loop program where we initiate those maneuvers just when feed forward with pre-programmed uh, uh, patterns. And uh, then we switch to the stabilized mode only in the recovery phase of such a maneuver. Um, well, as I said, we started as a company that wanted to create drones for, for shows. Uh, so we did uh, some tests uh, before the pandemic and also during the pandemic, though the opportunities were quite limited. Uh, here you can see just some examples of, um, yeah, the, first the flapper drones can look very differently and uh, yeah, you can do different uh, things. But these were really like just uh, first attempts. On the right, you can see the Flapper dressed more like a, a bat uh, with, with ears and uh, wings uh, adjusted. Uh, so in general, uh, although the aerodynamics of the wing is important, uh, there is quite a lot of freedom in that you have in uh, the shape uh, the, the wing uh, can take. Uh, so on the left, you can see the same drone, but with uh, wings uh, that make it uh, look like more like a butterfly. Uh, and in this test, we actually were carrying menus to a table in in restaurant uh, that was at the beginning of the pandemic, where we wanted to show that you can limit uh, uh, the amount of contact needed between the personnel and uh, the guests while entertaining them. And uh, at the top, you can actually see a performance that we're now rehearsing uh, together with, uh, uh, yeah. Svetlin Velchev, uh, a dancer from uh, that based in Amsterdam, uh, and it will be actually an opening show at the Technology Festival here in, in two weeks. Um, we also did a quick test with uh, Comet Entertainment with, uh, uh, yeah, Gabor and, and Tamash will talk about uh, what they do uh, later in the talk. And uh, this was actually something we prepared in just two hours in one afternoon, but we wanted to show that you can, just by introducing one flapper into, uh, let's say, conventional drone light show, you can bring a new, uh, very special effect. These drones uh, are actually crazy flies, um, but the flapper was flown manually. Uh, the crazy flies were flown with LPS system here. Okay. Uh, 
well, finally, I'll, I'll get to talk about uh, our current drones a bit. So we have built prototypes that range uh, from 25 to 60 centimeters in wingspan. Uh, but uh, our current main product is the Nimble Plus uh, EDU, like, uh, which stands for education. Uh, it is still, let's say, a pre-release product, but it is available to early adopters. It weighs about 100 grams uh, and can carry an extra payload of uh, about 25 to 30 grams. Um, we designed it such that it is, uh, um, at least for a flapping drone, quite robust and it can be serviced uh, easily. So all the parts can be replaced uh, and we provide the spares. Um, the standard battery we supply is 300 milliampere hours, uh, which gives you more than five minutes of flight time. And that is when you fly with maximum payload and you hover. And as I will show later, this flight time can be further extended either by flying in more energy efficient regime or uh, by using larger batteries. And um, the applications are uh, currently mostly in academic research and uh, R&D purposes of uh, companies, for example, who want to test out their sensors and see how they behave on a unconventional platform. Uh, here's just for the scale. I also have one uh, flapper here uh, in my hand, uh, though I don't know if you can see the, the video as well. Uh, and the potential application is also for drone shows. Uh, which uh, yeah is something we would like to exploit uh, further with uh, partners who are interested in that. Um, if you order uh, a Nimble Plus from us, you get, uh, of course, the ready-to-fly drone with just the wings uh, and um, body uh, panels detached uh, in, a, in a nice flight case. And as I mentioned, all the parts are available as spares. Uh, this actually is a uh, an older photo on the right already, but shows you that the whole drone uh, is not very complex, doesn't require that many parts for, again, for a flapping wing uh, vehicle. Um, the appearance of the drone is customizable, so uh, we are supplying only one uh, uh, specific uh, look, but uh, uh, the user can modify that. As I mentioned, you can adjust also the wings, so you can make them slightly bigger and give them different forms. Uh, you can paint wings uh, and you can play a lot with the shape of the body panels. Uh, we support uh, RGB LEDs, so there is a, an integrated power supply that can uh, yeah, uh, be used for that. Uh, so it's very easy to also light up your drone according to your wishes. Uh, for the flight control hardware, so um, the very first prototypes used uh, something else, but uh, we start collaborating uh, uh, with uh, Bitgrace uh, uh, shortly after we, we started. Uh, and so we're using the Crazy Fly Bolt uh, as the flight control board. Uh, so, yeah, it's the standard uh, bolt uh, with the standard uh, specs. Uh, it's pretty much the same as, as, as the Crazy Fly. Uh, and uh, on top of the Crazy Fly Bolt, we have our uh, own uh, ESC board with uh, some integrated functionality like a micro SD card logging interface for the RGB LEDs. There is interface for external uh, receiver, which we supply as an option to the, the receiver itself. And uh, there is integrated power measurement, which uh, is nice uh, both for research, but also for uh, some health uh, monitoring of your drone. And uh, the because the the base hardware is uh, the bolt, uh, it also supports a dawn dex. Uh, so we have tested lighthouse and the LPS or ultra wideband positioning deck. Uh, it can work with uh, motion capture, uh, time of flight sensors, optic flow sensor can also be attached and it communicates uh, well. But uh, yeah, uh, we haven't really tested if it. Uh, works uh, as well as on a crazy fly because of the additional vibration you get on a flapping wing drone. Um, yeah, uh, as for the, comp the compatibility with the software ecosystem of Bitgrace, um, we're basically customizing the, the firmware. So uh, the firmware is our own fork, but there are only minor changes which are related to the power distribution, control gains, and things like that. 
but there are no changes to the communication protocols, etc. That means that for all the other, uh, uh, let's say, libraries uh, and and uh, clients and and smartphone apps, uh, it is fully app, uh, compatible with the standard, uh, yeah, uh, solutions. Um, which also means that if you have already done some development on the crazy fly, it will be very easy to, uh, yeah, uh, run this on on a flapper. And um, we have not used the third party uh, um, apps uh, like, like the Crazy Swarm or, or Skybrush, but um, we believe it shouldn't be very difficult to implement its uh, support of the flapper. Uh, and uh, lastly, um, now in the latest firmware, uh, you can actually select a configuration of your drone. So uh, our aim is to create a separate configuration for a flapper uh, such that the firmware becomes also a standard and you just choose the configuration, whether it's a crazy fly or, or a flapper or, or another drone. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, you can use the flapper with uh, all the indoor positioning systems supported in the uh, crazy fly firmware, um, whether it's a uh, motion uh, capture, uh, we have tested this with uh, OptiTrack, uh, whether it's ultra wideband or whether it's Lighthouse. For starting, we recommend Lighthouse because it's the easiest to, to set up and a cheap wrist and works uh, very well. So here is an example of a flapper with the Lighthouse deck installed. Um, to install the deck, it actually needs to be installed on top of the drone. So we're working on some flex cables that allow this installation, which uh, yeah, we can now provide to beta testers, but will later be uh, sold as, as, a, as a, an accessory to the drone. And so yeah, in this case, you can see just a demo where we use the uh, GUI uh, of CF client uh, with the takeoff, land, uh, up, down, uh, left, right, and forward, backward uh, uh, commands. Of course, you can use the Python libraries to uh, program more complex uh, flight patterns. But um, at this point, our main focus goes uh, into the drone and, and its hardware. Uh, and we just uh, provide a minimum example that yeah works. But it's up to the users to then uh, develop more advanced uh, uh, applications. Uh, here you can see a flight in the OptiTrack system. Uh, this is actually a test uh, that was uh, recorded together with uh, a PhD student at the MAV lab of TU Delft, uh, Diana Olenik, who designed this uh, fan system. Uh, so it's an array of fans that you can use to uh, generate various types of gusts. Uh, but in this test, we just keep the fans running at a constant speed, and we're basically measuring the, the power uh, at different uh, flight speeds. And the flapper is being controlled by a yeah, computer system, which is using OptiTrack as a uh, for a position reference. And so, for example, in this test, we could uh, measure this this graph that shows that while at uh, hover we're uh, consuming about 16 watts, this gets uh, down to 12 and a half or 13 watts uh, at the uh, yeah 2.7 meters per second in this case. So. Uh, reduction of 20%. Uh, so if you want to get maximum uh, flight time, uh, yeah, there is a sweet spot uh, uh, at which you can fly, um, which is not what you would get with a conventional uh, quadcopter drone. And just a small remark, uh, for higher speeds, uh, the control system was not tuned very well. So in this particular test, the vehicle was oscillating quite a lot. So I believe that the power at 3.4 meters per second would be lower than, than the graph shows. Um, and uh, I have another example of Delft, who has been one of our first, uh, let's say, users of our drones. Um, and that is uh, an attempt, first attempt in like creating a swarm of uh, flapping vehicles uh, using relative localization. Uh, so what you can see in this test is two drones. The one uh, at the top or on the right at the bottom view is the leader. So that one is controlled manually by a human pilot. And the second drone is now just learning its relative position, but uh, soon it will switch to a follower mode. 
so now uh, it should be following the leader. And all inf the only information this uh, drone has is, uh, so it has uh, the LPS deck and uh, the leader also has one LPS deck and that's it. And they're basically trying to localize relatively to each other just using these two decks. So there is no motion tracking, no uh, anchors uh, that would be used in this test. But it shows you that uh, a flapper drone can be used even in these, uh, uh, yeah, quite um, new uh, and uh, yeah, fully autonomous uh, uh, ways uh, how, how you can steer your drone with minimum amount of uh, sensors. Uh, you can notice that uh, and the, the girl <laughs> that is uh, sort of walking uh, the flapper is uh, carrying it on the leash, <laughs> as we call it. But this is just a way to, to save the drone from uh, crashes because, as you know, any uh, autonomous tests, especially the first time you do them, uh, may uh, result in a crash. And while we design the flappers to be as robust as possible, uh, it can always happen that uh, something breaks. So this is just a way to save you some trouble and uh, be able to do more tests in one afternoon. Uh, finally, uh, one graph showing the battery life. So as I said, uh, with the standard battery in blue, we can reach easily five minutes. Uh, this is without any payload, so then we can get to almost eight minutes. Uh, but with larger batteries, um, we can go uh, close to 20 minutes. Uh, that is when you use all the payload capacity just for, for a battery, so you cannot carry anything else. But for example, with the shells that we uh, supply, you can still uh, at uh, a battery of twice the capacity then the third one is and then you can reach about 12 30 minutes of flight time um, well uh, this is more of a sneak peek of uh, what the flappers could look like in the future so we're also working on a prototype which for now we call the mini flapper the specs are still not set in stone but uh, the weight would be about 40 grams, uh, wingspan about 30, 33 centimeters in this case. And uh, we still want to have a decent payload of 5 to 10 grams, such that you can still add some additional sensors and make these uh, robots fly autonomously if you want. Uh, the flight time should still be above five minutes. And uh, while the bigger drone is targeted on uh, let's say business uh, or, or academic users and uh, this uh, flapper mini flapper should also be focused on consumers uh, as well as the pricing should be uh, appropriate for such market and we're considering to uh, sell this as a kit uh, so you get uh, the experience of uh, yeah, assembling the drone first and understanding how it works and then having fun flying it of course and so this is just a sneak peek, but uh, as you can see, even at this scale, we can make uh, the drones very agile. Uh, yeah, it just needs few wing beats to go from vertical hovering flight to a near horizontal flight. And uh, what is uh, especially um, different compared to quadcopters is that uh, when stopping uh, it, um, due to the high aerodynamic drag, once you go vertical, you basically auto brake, so it stops immediately. With a quadcopter, you would have to counter steer in order to slow your drone down. And especially for beginner users or when you fly in constrained spaces, uh, this is a big advantage of the flapper drone. But it can still uh, do some tricks uh, like uh, uh, these uh, flips, which is, of course, uh, something you want to do with your drone, right? Okay, uh, well, we're getting to the end of this uh, talk, but uh, one of the first questions I'm always getting is why is it better than a drone? And so that's why there is this uh, slide. Uh, well, uh, if we look at the qualities which are better and that can be quantified, then it would be safety and resilience to collisions. Um, because the, the flappers, they have no propellers, but they instead have very lightweight, uh, soft wings uh, that are moving back and forth. Uh, these soft uh, structures will not uh, cause any harm to, to human, to, to objects uh, near it. But it also means that uh, the wings, uh, they bounce off uh, uh, objects. So um, unlike a propeller, which when it hits something, it will stop and the 
drone goes down. So on the right, you can see a small GIF video showing what happens. Uh, it was a test we did in a greenhouse, and it shows what happens if you fly into uh, Gerbera plants uh, with a with a flapper, which just you know like stops at the plant and bounces off. Uh, while with a quadcopter, if you fly into those plants, you will first cut uh, them, and uh, at the same time, the drone will just lose uh, stability and will uh, crash. Uh, but then there are also uh, advantages which are harder to quantify, but uh, uh, they are still there. Uh, and uh, that is the, the sound uh, of a flapper, which is different. It is uh, at lower frequencies uh, instead of uh, you know the typical high-pitched and quite irritating buzz of, of propellers. And it's considered by most people to be more pleasant. And uh, the very important aspect is the way uh, uh, we perceive it because of its like natural appearance, it's uh, perceived as more friendly. Uh, and uh, especially in the future, once we have a lot of drones around us uh, or a lot of robots, and some of them would be flying, it is important that uh, we accept them in our uh, environments. And I think the Bionz part appearance is uh, important there. Um, so for future directions of flapper drones, um, um, as I said, currently the size uh, spans from 60 to 25 uh, centimeters, um, but uh, it is possible to make these flapping uh, drones smaller. Uh, you can see some examples uh, from yeah, Air Environment, uh, which is still a free-flying uh, drone with a battery, with onboard battery, and it can still fly for yeah at least five minutes. Um, and if we look at even smaller scales, uh, the, the smallest uh, flying vehicles uh, with flapping wings were built by Harvard universities and other as well later. Um, uh, but these uh, are tethered, so the power is brought by tiny wires. But uh, in future, we will have better batteries, we will have better actuators, and this will allow us to go, go smaller. The physics uh, of flapping wings works actually better at smaller scales, so we're really limited by the uh, the building stones we have as engineers at the moment. But uh, with uh, especially what we're lacking right now is actuators that would work like uh, muscles, so uh, actuators that would yeah contract and and uh, elongate. Um, so for now, we have to use. Uh, linkage mechanisms uh, like we do in our flapping mechanism to convert rotator motion and but once we have linear actuators uh, muscle-like actuators we will be able to go even smaller uh, so in the, in the short run we're uh, thinking of creating a diy kit and we're also looking for a partner who would be interested to create a toy product with us and in the long run we also see potential in professional drone systems where you need tiny drones for simple tasks like uh, sensing uh, uh, your environment, uh, humidity detecting diseases, uh, possibly pollination in, uh, in horticulture. And um, another application could be monitoring uh, stock in, in warehouses where drones are starting started, starting to be used already now. Uh, but uh, yeah, having a safe drone uh, that is less intrusive to the environment uh, would be an advantage. So uh, finally, you must be wondering, how do you get a flapper, right? So, well, um, as I mentioned right now, we're mostly focusing on, uh, let's say, academic uh, or drone show applications. So if uh, your application falls into this, uh, uh, please just contact us at our email address uh, and uh, we will send you the specification and, and uh, quotation. Uh, for consumers, we do not have a product yet. Uh, but you can uh, subscribe at our website, uh, flapperdrones.com. And uh, as I said, we're preparing this DIY kit, which should be focused also on consumers. So then uh, you might uh, become one of our beta testers. OK, that was uh, everything for, for me. So thanks a lot for your attention. And uh, yeah, I guess there is uh, some time for questions now. So uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, to them. Thank you. Let's 
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matei. Really, really interesting. Um, do anyone have questions? You can ask them in the chat or maybe unmute yourself uh, and raise your hand. There is a little option on it uh, in the Google Meet. Don't hesitate. Okay, I have actually have a question because uh, you talked about uh, uh, adaptation for uh, shows like you you show the fairies and everything is there any limitations on what you can actually do is there uh, like um, a weight or height problem are you thinking of the yeah. antennas for example yeah yeah so there are certainly some limits uh so in terms of weight uh you can add additional 20 to 30 grams uh to to the drone so whatever your design needs to fit into this uh, weight budget and um, yeah, typically because of this uh, mass is not very big, it will not affect the inertia of the drone to an extent where it would become unstable. Uh, so the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you shouldn't place too many things below the wings because this will yeah decrease your your, your performance. But um, there's quite a lot of uh, freedom in there. Yeah, maybe the painting the wings uh, does it make it heavier and or so again, like uh, depending on what paint you use, it could, but uh, um, it is possible to, you know, like use very lightweight uh, paints, like you know, paint brushes or even like uh, markers mm -hmm. um, or an inject printer that can print on, on uh, certain materials uh, that, that uh, will be fine. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Uh, I will give the... There is Jörg Philipp Froner from uh, Action Light that has a question. Uh, you can actually either, yeah, go ahead. Hi, Matej. Uh, just one short question. Um, now, you mentioned that you had uh, kind of uh, developed that also for drone show applications. Um, now, I guess that's always the application where you would have like an autonomous kind of show going on and then performers interacting in the pre pre-rehearsed setting, which is safe enough. Um, I mean, your drone uh, in terms of speed and lightweight and construction seems to be safe from the system itself already. Now, could you imagine a scenario where, would you, where one could actually kind of combine the autonomous flying drone with the remote operated drone for special effect flying a certain path, which is operator driven because of obstacles, whatever. Yeah, sorry, I got a little bit distracted by the chat uh, questions. Could, could you repeat just the last uh, part? So the question was about human operation versus uh, autonomous? <laughs> kind of, human operation following autonomous operation. So I could imagine a scenario where you, where you would have your pre-built dance and then have for story purposes, whatever, for example, one drone shoot off into whatever backstage area, but you want that to have that manual operated due to obstacles, whatever, uh -huh. positioning system, et cetera. Would you, can you imagine something like that? So switching between autonomous and manual flight. That's the question. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is certainly Taking possible. over the drone, if you want. Yeah, th that is certainly possible. So. Uh, it would require uh, some change in, in the firmware. So we are using the Crazy Fly firmware where such functionality is not implemented as far as I know. But we have uh, helped to improve the support of external receivers. So for example, you can now have a switch uh, which basically defines the state of your drone. So if you flip a switch, you can go from autonomous to uh, manual flight rather easily. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I'll uh, go to the chat questions. We have, uh, there is actually, there are two questions about efficiency. Uh, the first is, how good do you think the efficiency could get? Uh, so I, I think that uh, the efficiency is already pretty good. It depends on the metric that you use. But if you compare it to the drones of the same weight, we're actually not much, much worse. Uh, so as I said, with the highest capacity battery that we can carry, we can uh, fly for about uh, 18 to 19 minutes. And that is hovering flight. If you fly forward, it will be 
you know, 28% more or so. Um, but we're certainly not at the limit of what you can do with flapping wings uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, there is room for optimization of the, of the wing shape, uh, of uh, the whole gear train. Uh, so, yeah, we can, we can certainly improve there. We're comparing this to propellers, which have been, you know, like refined and optimized for the last, well, almost 100 years, but uh, especially in the last 10 years, there has been huge progress done there. So, yeah, so it can still get better. Uh, I don't have like a, you know, like a number to, to tell you, is it going to get twice as, as good? Uh, that is hard to tell, but there's certainly still some something to be gained there. Yeah. Uh, the second question about efficiency, you have actually already kind of answered this. Uh, how does it compare with the uh, quad 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 yeah. copters? Sorry. So, as I said, like in terms of like one to one uh, comparison at, at uh, hover, a uh, quad copter will probably be slightly better at this point, but that's just because there has been much more effort into optimization of the motor and propeller uh, combination. Uh, but one advantage we have is in forward flight, uh, because uh, if you fly forward, you get additional lift uh, because uh, the wing starts gliding as well. That gives you, uh, so it lowers the power needed to, to maintain flight, uh, which is not what you see in the quadcopters. Uh, there, you typically need more power if you want to go faster. And for flapper, it will be the, that for very high speeds, but for moderate speeds, you actually lower your uh, power uh, needs by flying for. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we actually have uh, other questions. Uh, I'll take uh, Mini Kiyoshi's uh, one. Um, he says, I guess uh, ultra wide band might be better to get installed on the flapper rather than the lighthouse. Is there any issue with the ultra, ultra wide band? Yeah, so it is indeed uh, easier to install it because it can be pretty much oriented in any orientation <laughs> on the drone. Uh, but at the same time, it is something that gives you less precise estimate of your position. And uh, combined with the fact that the onboard sensors uh, are being vibrated quite a lot, so the signals you get out of them is also not so clean. Uh, you would have to, at least with the current uh, Crazy Fry firmware, you would have to optimize the common filter to get uh, as good, let's say, well, you will never get as good as with motion tracking or with Lighthouse, but yeah, uh, you just will get better position control with Lighthouse system. But it is possible to fly with LPS system. It works out of the box, but no, just not as good. It's not as precise. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Pionjin Kim has actually had um, uh, a question about um, does it require external motion positioning system to fly, or can you fly uh, can you fly only using onboard sensors? Yeah. Uh, so it depends what what you mean by flying it. Uh, if you want to tell it where it should go, uh, then. Uh, yeah, you'd better use a positioning system or a flight manually, but um, you could do some sort of dead reckoning if, if that is what you mean, but uh, that will be worse than on a conventional drone. Um, but uh, yeah, like the bare minimum to fly a flapper is uh, you need a drone and you, for example, need a smartphone uh, or you need a drone and you need a transmitter. Uh, and yeah. Flow deck is something that we haven't tested uh, enough, but uh, so I, I see there is another question about that. Um, so um, yeah, image information is indeed a bit tricky because the, the flapper is vibrating much more than a conventional drone. So either you need to use some smart solution how to attach the camera such that the camera doesn't vibrate or at least not that much or use a camera that doesn't rely on the light intensity but rather changes in light intensity and there are such cameras being uh, introduced now and that might actually give you uh, information that can be uh, used uh, by the computer vision uh, to, to control the drone quite well but with conventional cameras that is uh, indeed a challenge so 
if you want to build a camera drone, don't uh, use a flapper yet. <laughs> Yes, perfect. Uh, I think um, if there is another question for Matei, please take it uh, either in the chat or by raising your hand, like in the school room. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Matei. Well, yeah, for, uh, I, I thank you for yeah giving me the floor and everyone for the nice uh, questions.